Um, I'm just going to take five minutes to sort of uh, talk about what we're doing today, and then we'll launch right into a bunch of the embryo lethals talks. It's going to be a little complicated. We're going to be moving laptops up here, but um, we will do our best to stay on schedule. So the last two days we've been doing this inward-looking review of progress and issues and procedural kind of stuff for the IMPC. Today is meant to be a scientific discussion, more open-ended, more outward-looking. We're going to talk uh, more about collaborations and impact on the community and, you know, take a completely different view and focus just really on science and the impact of the program. So, um, as you remember, last year we had the human disease gene discovery programs like UDN, Kids First, CMG, and those folks that we collaborate with. So this year we're having the embryo lethal folks. Um, <clears throat> from our perspective at NIH, as program people, it's an interesting problem of trying to mesh a U grant, which is a cooperative agreement, with R grants, which are investigator-initiated, free-range, do whatever you want, <laughs> follow the science kind of structure. Um, we don't tell these folks what they have to do. We don't give them milestones. We don't negotiate that kind of stuff. They do what they want. You know, it's all good. 90, 98% of NH grants operate on that mechanism. So, <clears throat> so it's a little bit strange. But, you know, the science is all good. So we're really going to talk about the science. My interest is not that important. Um, then we're going to get into the, the new initiatives that relate to the embryo lethal. So the theme is embryo lethals. We're going to follow that on with, with Steve and Jason talking about um, the F0 phenotyping and trying to move things to uh, some in vitro. So can we do mouse phenotyping without the mouse, right? Which saves us a lot of time, money, and effort um, and seems appropriate for the pre-E9.5 since we don't do any imaging or anything with them anyway. So. Um, so we'll explore that. And then tying that into the larger community, I had gotten some suggestions for names, and Terry had said, you should talk to the folks at the Broad. You have some poll at the Broad. You can get somebody there. So I shot off some emails, and they said, no, no, no. You want to hear from Jason Moffat, because he's the thought leader here. So they put me in touch with Jason, who's roaming around. There you are. So he's going to talk about his um, cell-based essential screening. Um, so that covers sort of the morning session. And then hopefully these folks will be willing to talk a little bit at the end of the meeting, um, just brainstorm about future directions. In the afternoon, we're also going to talk about future plans and outward looking stuff. So Carolyn's going to come by and talk about the strategic planning at NHGRI. So we're planning our next 10 years. <clears throat> There's a lot more movement into sort of functional follow up, um, some new dimensions that I think are interesting. Uh, not only functional follow-up, but also genetic modifiers and genetic background effects. And we're trying to put together some initiatives in that area. And also data integration and our movement in the informatics domain. So we'll have two talks. One is Julia Wang is going to talk about Marvel 2. So Common Fund has just funded some supplements and now has put out an RO3 FOA for data integration. So they're looking to bring together all their major data sets that are being produced by all the Common Fund programs. And Julia's got one of the, and Hugo have one of the first awards in that area. And then we're gonna have Rob Williams come and talk to us about genetic modifiers, gene networks, big data, and data integration um, for a different perspective, you know, on comp. So we have to think about we don't operate independently of the larger scientific community. How do we interact with them? Our mandate is single genetic background, inbred strain, one inbred strain. We don't look at genetic modifiers. <clears throat> Should we, how do we interact with people who think about that kind of stuff? I mean, I've always envisioned comp two really being comp on a different genetic background. I'm starting to look at that. Um, so hopefully we'll have some productive discussions around that. Um, and then the other blind spot for comp really is the cell phenotype. Other than histology, um, how do we relate to cell-based phenotyping? And I've been talking to Ken about 
the connection with omics there. But there may be also some initiatives coming out of genome that are cell-based stuff. So there's, you know, other opportunities to think about where we're going to be in the next 10 years. So that's today, and it should be interesting. So we'll start with the first embryo talk, and I will log in and get the WebEx people online. <laughs>